Hey, thanks for watching another video on the Be A Hero Gaming channel where we talk about all things gaming and how you can be a hero in real life. Well, one of the ways uh, I'm trying to be more of a hero in real life is trying new things. And I extensively covered a collectible card game, Wonders of the First, uh, several weeks ago. And uh, a lot of people commented on the channel about several other games I should try. And uh, my interest was uh, very peaked and I thought, hey, why don't I give these games a try? One of those games was Star Wars Unlimited that uh, maybe I had heard of before, just mentioned, but I didn't really know anything about it. So I bought the two, um, the the quick start uh, game that came with the, the quick start rules here and two decks already put together just to give the game a try. And I wanted to talk about five things I like about this game and five things I don't like about this game. Um, but again, in your real lives, if there's something, you feel like your life's getting kind of stale and there's something new you wanna try, go give something new a try. Um, it will uh, broaden your horizons, uh, make you more uh, adaptable, and um, and you'll probably find something you really like. You never know. So always be open to try new things. Don't get uh, stuck in a rut with with uh, the things you're comfortable with. So that's what I did here. I gave this game a try, and I just want to talk about a couple things about the game. Just really briefly, kind of how you play the game. This is not, by all means, an all-extensive uh, tutorial on how you play this game. It's very brief. Uh, you have your deck of cards here, you have your base and your leader, and the object of the game is to destroy the other person's base, which in this, in this case would face my base here on the other side of the table here. Um, uh, and you can see here most of the bases, I think, in fact I think all of them have 30 health, and then once the base is destroyed, uh, you, you have won the game. You also have a leader that has a special ability here, a special action, and then an epic action that once you meet certain requirements, you can summon Luke Skywalker to fight for you. And once he's eliminated, he just goes back here as your leader um, with his special action, but is not able to be summoned again. Uh, so that's kind of how that works. You have um, your ground forces and your space forces. It doesn't really matter which side these are on, but they just have to face each other, ground and ground, space and space. And then as these cards come into play, you are able to use their attack power to attack the opponent's base or attack the other units in the same area. So ground to ground and space to space. You'll see here on each card here, there is a, uh, a power or an attack value as well as your hit point value that it takes to defeat um, the unit. And it clearly says up here that it's a unit and this one is for the ground for C-3PO. So. Um, Similar to uh, other games you may know of, when you exhaust a card, you turn it sideways here. You can see these are my energy cards. Actually, maybe they call them resources. I can't remember what they call them. I think they're called resources. Once they're exhausted, they're turned sideways. At the end of the round, these will all be uh, straightened back up here again. And uh, that's kind of how the games play. There are several rules about who you can attack and when, and whether you can just bypass their guys and go right to their base, either from the ground or from the air or certain scenarios when you must attack their units before you can attack their base. Um, there are also cards you can play from your hand that give you some kind of benefit. Let's see if I have some of them in, them in here. These are all units here. Let me just show you a couple of these here. So an event card would be a card that you would play uh, on your turn that would have some kind of an effect. But most of the cards are gonna be units. That you're gonna play either to the space area or to the ground area. An upgrade is obviously an item that you can give to one of your units. Um, if the unit is uh, Luke Skywalker, you get some additional benefit. Same thing with Darth Vader's lightsaber. Um, another event card that can be played here. So let's just run through here real quick the, the five things that I enjoy about this game, the five things that I don't. Just starting off right off the bat, I really like the animation um, of the cards. I would rather see that then I know the Star Wars uh, CCG customizable card game back from the 90s, they use actual photos from the movies, which uh, was kind of cool and a little bit nostalgic, but um, I like the animation. There's a lot more you can do with animation. It looks good, and you'll notice that most of the scenes uh, are, are from the movie. This, this looks very similar to a scene from the movie of Luke Skywalker in Empire Strikes Back. Uh, but really cool to see the animation, because there's a lot more that you can do with that. Uh, and it makes the game a little bit more fun. The second thing I like about the game is that uh, a lot of games like Star Wars, you're either the light side or the dark side. Okay, not the case with this game, which is pretty cool, and I was really happy to see that. You'll see here in the in the rules manual, there are these icons 
that are on each card. And the, uh, the icons are these six icons here. And basically, um, your leader and your base combined determine the icons that can be in your deck. So you can see here that we have Luke Skywalker and we have the uh, Administrator's Tower on Cloud City. We have these three icons. So I can include any cards in this deck that have these icons on them. Now, if there is a card in the deck that has an icon different from these, it's going to take an additional resource to play. If it has two icons that are different, for example, if Luke Skywalker's two icons and I put him in a dark side deck, you could do that. You technically could, but there'd be two icons that would be different than those evil icons, so it would take you an additional two resources uh, to play that card. So uh, kind of cool in a way that you can really mix things up, and you technically could put light side cards in a dark side deck. You could do that, um, but it would take you additional resources to play. But the cool thing about that is it gives you a lot more options than when you're putting a deck together because you have these um, different icons here. So you could do an aggression and a heroism deck. It'd be really weird, but you could. Uh, it gives you a lot more variety in the way you can put your deck together rather than just doing a light side or a dark side. I thought that was the second thing that I really thought was cool about this game. It was a great idea. Uh, the third thing that I like about this game, it's very easy to track things. This set came with these cardboard punched out tokens. Um, to, you can see you can place damage counters on your units here. So once they re uh, reach their end of their hit points here, they're eliminated. That's really the only thing there is to track. I think there's an initiative token you pass back and forth as well. And you can also use this uh, here. If Luke Skywalker has been summoned and then eliminated, you can put this over the top of that saying you can't use that epic action again. But tracking things is very simple. Uh, there's not a whole lot to track and you can just play the game without feeling like you're doing a whole bunch of of uh, keeping track of everything. Um, the uh, fourth thing that I liked about this game is I thought the leader and the base was a really good idea because this again uh, allows you another opportunity to add some variety to the way you form your deck. So you, each deck is gonna have a base and a leader. And again, these icons determine what, what cards can be in your deck. And then you can just create a deck however you want that's gonna support these or however you want the deck to perform. But the cool thing is I could do Luke Skywalker at some other base. He could be on Hoth or I'm not sure what all the bases are or he could be on Tatooine or something like that. Um, but I can mix and match those or I could take Luke Skywalker away and I could have Princess Leia be my leader or Chewbacca or, or an Ewok. I think even Boba Fett is a leader. There's several different leader-based combinations that you can do, again, that will determine based off these icons what your deck will be made up of. Very cool. Again, another way to customize the deck and give it some variety other than just light side, dark side, Luke Skywalker versus Darth Vader. Again, that's kind of the classic deal here and that's the way the starter kit is, but it doesn't have to be that way. There's several options that you have as far as your, uh, your, um, your base and your leader. And in fact, I think, I don't know this for sure, I, I think in each pack, it comes with a leader card. I might be wrong with that or a base card or something. So you have a big variety. And uh, the fifth thing that I enjoy about this game is that the turns go very quick. I love games where turns are back and forth, back and forth, because that way you're not sitting there waiting forever for someone to build out this extravagant strategy and how they're gonna, they're gonna play their, their hand of cards and everything. Um, you basically get a single action on your turn. You get a single action to either play a card or to activate an ability, or you can steal the initiative token. Uh, I think there's a couple other things you can do, but you really just do one thing on your turn, it gets passed to the other player, and once you can't do anything else, the round ends and a new round starts. And so um, once you've exhausted all your resources, you've played all the cards you can play, you've taken the initiative token, there's really nothing left for you to do once the resources are exhausted. So then the round would end, everything that's exhausted would be, would be set back upright, and a new round would begin. And so I think that's really cool when games go quick like that, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because as you're taking each turn, your strategy is slowly building over the game, rather than you sitting there for 10 minutes waiting for someone to figure out what they wanna do. Um, with all the several actions and things that they can do on their turn. You get one action, so the game moves quick. Now, what about the things that I that I don't like about the game? Um, one thing is, and again, the, these aren't, I will say this, 
I enjoy this game. I think it's a fun game to play. I, I think overall, I really enjoy the game. And so most of these things aren't really that big of a deal. But the, the first thing that I don't enjoy about the game is it's just another leader game. Okay, you've got uh, Magic Commander, which isn't, if you defeat the leader, I realize you can bring the leader back in. It's not really like you lose the game if your commander's defeated, but kind of like you as the wizard are the leader. And so once that person's health has been reduced to zero, they lose the game. So it's another leader game like, you know, Magic the Gathering or Pokemon or Flesh and Blood and all those games, like you're trying to defeat the leader. Um, it's just kind of another spin on that, which isn't a big deal. The, the game is still fun to play, but, you know, I wish... Uh, there'd be more games that was a little bit different than just uh, defeat the leader and you win the game. Um, the second thing that that bothers me, and this is probably the biggest thing that I don't like about this game. Uh, again, I still enjoy playing it, but I do not like games where you have to use regular cards out of your deck that have to be sacrificed as energy or resources. I really don't like that. And uh, some of you might argue and say, oh, I think that's just fine, but... At the beginning of each round, you'll have cards in your hand. You've got to decide which card am I going to sacrifice and use as a resource. That just, you know, I look through here and I'm like, well, this is a big card that I can't use yet, but I want to use later. Well, these cards are, you know, inexpensive to play. They only cost one resource, so I can play this early on. But uh, it's a supply, so I need a guy for that or a unit. So I just don't like, I'd rather have the cards designated for resources like Pokemon's Energy or um, Magic the Gathering's Mana, because that, that land card is designated for that job, rather than you having to sacrifice regular cards um, to, to place them. Kind of, it's kind of like with Flesh and Blood, too. You gotta pitch a card, and I just don't like doing that. And, and again, that's probably just my OCD, wanting to play all the cards I have in my hand and not wanting to sacrifice them as, as resources. But you'll just find these cards slowly siphon out of your hand and become resources, and then that's it for the game. You can't use those cards anymore. That's probably the biggest thing that bothers me. Um, number three, and this is kind of a mixed bag. This isn't really a negative, but the game is pretty basic. There's not, uh, at least with the cards I have, maybe some of the other cards, and, and I think we're gonna get a hold of some booster packs and open those up and see what other options we have. The game is pretty basic. There's not a lot of really deep-rooted strategy you can do with the game. It's kind of just attacking um, and defending and defeating the base. And there's a few event cards you can play that do have some effect on the game. Um, and maybe later sets will introduce more uh, mechanics to the game. The good thing about that is it's very easy to teach. I played a game of this with my 7-year-old, and he seemed to do just fine uh, figuring the game out and playing it. He really does enjoy games, and so he does a little bit better, but... Um, it wasn't hard to teach to my seven-year-old ha to have him play it. Um, but again, if you're looking for a deep strategy game, uh, this, may, this may or may not be it. And again, some of you might uh, you know, tell me in the comments if, if no, actually there's a lot of cards out there that will really change the game. Uh, I just haven't seen them yet. Um, the fourth thing that, that bothers me about the game is I wonder how much variety there will be with future sets. I just feel like um, the Star Wars world is very big, um, but how far can you go to where where you have eventually exhausted the Star Wars universe? Where there's there's really and then you're kind of making stuff up, and which I realize a lot of the, some of this stuff is already made up. But, um, I just don't know how far you can take the game because you're limited by the Star Wars universe, and that kind of goes hand in hand with the fifth thing that I don't really like about the game is it's very genre specific. If you don't like sci-fi, if you don't like Star Wars, but who, who doesn't like Star Wars? I mean, come on, really. Star Wars is awesome. Uh, but, you know, that, that could be a, a drawback for some people. Um, I don't like space. I don't like sci-fi. I don't like Star Wars. Then this may not be the game for you because it's very, very genre specific. And there are some other games where um, their world is so big, they could go from space to Earth to under the ocean to, I mean, all kinds of different things they could do with, with their card games which makes those a little more broad, makes those a little more um, capable of adding additional sets to the game where this is very limited based on the Star Wars universe. So with that said, again, I, overall I enjoy the game. I have a good time playing it. It's very simple to teach, very simple to play, keep track of, really enjoy the artwork um, and the variety with deck building. We're, we're gonna, uh, we did get a hold of some packs and I think we're gonna bust those open and do some like, uh, some, uh, draft play or something like that 
and just kind of see how those decks get put together and really excited to see what, uh, you know, again, symbols you got in here and, and the, the cards you're going to add to your deck. Again, if you feel like you're kind of stuck in a rut and uh, doing the same things over and over and over again, either with your games or with your life, try something new. Try a new restaurant. Try a new group of friends. Um, try a new sport, new outside activity that you maybe haven't done before. And you might find yourself um, enjoying a new hobby that you never even knew that you liked. Um, Thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, give this game a try. See what you think. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. If you think I'm totally off with my likes and dislikes, I would love to hear what you have to say. In the meantime, you guys all take care.